If you start a exciting company with massive opportunity and massive growth potential, investors will fall over their, their feet and knock each other out of the way to become part of, of your business, to get a piece of the pie. They want a piece of your pie. If you a uh, small business with limited growth potential, with a ceiling, ceiling of growth, it will be much more difficult to get additional investors interested in your pie. You need to make a, such a nice pie that people want a piece of your pie. And the more lucrative, the more cherries and chocolate and whatever is in your pie, tasty your pie looks, the more interested people will be to share your pie. So that is why it's so important for a wannabe entrepreneur to create, to bake the right pie. Because that's ultimately your, your goal, is to create, to bake such a nice pie that other people want the piece of your pie. And the nicer your pie is, the more people are prepared to pay for a slice of your pie. But if your pie does not look very nice, people won't be interested in, in, in getting a share of your pie. So bake a nice pie, make a nice pie, create a business that offers people the future. Now you've got two options. Um, if they want to buy X percentage of your, of your business, they can either be a, a silent partner, just an investor, someone that's not hands-on, or they you can pull them into your business and sometimes it's not a bad idea to pull someone else into your business because maybe because these people are probably whales so they've got a lot of money which they looking for a better return on their money and they see the potential in your business these people probably have a lot of business knowledge and if you pull them into your daily operations, it can be massively beneficial for your business because they come with a set of skills that you personally don't, don't have and they come with new eyes and they come with new ideas and they come with new impetus where they can, where they can actually be helpful. So although they you, you you sell a share of your pie you actually get much more in return by diluting your your shielding by getting someone in that will actually be beneficial to your company now i say company it can be a small business it can be a, a startup or it can be a business that's already been in in operation for a couple of years this this business is is is, is generating so much new business now that it's in a in a growth phase and you need more you need more cash you need cash to survive number one and then you need also cash to thrive now survival is a very difficult concept and it's part of the entrepreneurial process because if you your business don't survive you basically have to close your doors and then you've lost everything that you've put into the business so cash flow is king and to manage cash flow is crucial for the survival of your business. And like I say, one of the most painful periods for any small business is when you run out of cash, when you've got a cash flow problem. So make sure that cash is king in your business. Make sure your business may not be profitable and that's normally what happens to, to any business. You won't be profitable for a couple of years. Streamline processes to make it more productive because in being more productive you can save money that's what henry ford did henry ford wanted to build a vehicle for every american family that's why he was the pioneer in the assembly line because he realized that if your workers need to move around in order to to finish a car he realized that it's better if the car and all the parts move and the people basically stay stationary because people moving it's much more unproductive than goods assembly line moving because then people can concentrate on the one job that they do and they do it well 
and it's repetitive. That's why these days robots have taken over most of the car assembly in the whole world. And I, re I saw the other day that the new Tesla factory in, 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 in Texas is fully automated. There are some people, you still need people, but most of the nitty gritty repetitive work is done by robots. Because robots can work 24-7, they don't go on strike, um, it's a once of payment investment, they, they can run for long times and they don't take sick leave. But maybe your operation is not at that, that stage where it's viable at this stage to automate. It's too expensive, your production levels are too low, your factory is too small, there are certain limits. So automation is not always the answer, but it's an option. Entrepreneurs are very proud people. And in their pride, they often, often scared to ask for help, to seek help. Now, there are a lot of companies that offer business rescue solutions, but it comes at a price. So the, uh, one alternative is to get a business consultant in, which will charge you a fee. But maybe you need an external person to have a look at the overall business and to come with outside perspective how to save your business. It's maybe better to to pay that price and to get an outside professional in to come and assess your business, to give you guidance and to tell you what to do. That's heartbreaking, but it happens. Now, Albert Einstein changed the world with his recipe, E equals MC squared. Einstein said, the most beautiful thing we can experience is the mysterious. It is the source of all true art and science. Henry Ford's formula also changed the world. His assembly line changed the whole manufacturing process and basically created the industrial revolution. So you need to look for your formula, how to change the world. They could do it, so can you. Stephen Jobs' formula changed the world. He wanted to make computers so freaking amazing that normal people have got a resource where they can do graphics. Bill Gates changed the world. He wanted to put a, a PC in every house or maybe that was Steve Jobs. Steve Jobs wanted to have a personal computer in every household. His formula changed the world. Then he came up with another formula to put music on an iPod. That changed the world. Then he changed the then he got another formula to keep people hooked to their smartphones. He changed the world. When you read biographies of very successful entrepreneurs, the main theme that basically comes out of there is these people started in very difficult circumstances and that's what gives them the drive you know they get to a stage in their life where they they make a decision and say the way i'm living now is not lacquer it's not it's not nice i want to get out of my circumstances i want to escape this prison i want to become rich now in the past if you were a millionaire you were rich. These days, a million means most houses in America <laughs> cost close to a million rand. So if you, even if, if you've now got this, this model where you're going to buy properties and rent them out, if you've got two or three properties, you're already a millionaire on paper, but that does not make you rich. These days, they've dropped the Mm, and millionaire and replaces the B for billionaire. And like I say, most of these people started off in very dire circumstances. They wanted to escape. Like uh, Tony here on top. He, he, if he, and that's what I love about YouTube is you can go and watch these guys' life journeys. And they will tell you, they, they will tell you where they come from. You know, and if you hear their stories, you actually want to cry. 
Because most of us come from very stable homes. And that is probably why such a small percentage of people actually make it in life and become gazillionaires. It's because they've been in this this mindset where they were in the dumps and they made a made the decision that I want to get out of this. I want to move from this level to a higher level. And what happens then is they put a lot of work and effort into something. And that, that something may be like a Steve Jobs that put everything into his vision. Take on the mighty IBM. Steve Jobs wanted to take on Bill Gates. At that stage, Bill Gates and Steve Jobs were basically on the same level. Uh, Steve was more on hardware. Bill was more on software. Because Bill worked with, created Microsoft to work with IBM to create an operating system. Disk operating system. Coming back to Bill and Steve, they, at one stage, they rivalry. They wanted to pick each other up. Um, now, if you also watch the, the videos on YouTube, the start and the progression of Microsoft and Apple, you'll see at one stage that Bill came and he stole some ideas from Jobs. For instance, Bill could not understand how a mouse can communicate with a graphics interface that you can move this thing around with your hand and you can click and then it can does it on the screen. And I don't know, I, I watched this movie years ago, but I think what happened was then he, um, he actually contacted Jobs and Jobs said, but it's not hardware, it's software. And the light went on in Bill's head. But that's the other thing about entrepreneurship. You have to steal from other people. You, you, you're not so, no person on this earth is so fucking clever that they can, they can sit in front of a opportunity and can see in their mind's eye the whole progression from zero to billions. It's just impossible. You, you have to steal from other people. The easiest way, because no one can catch you for the, well, they can with patents and copyright and all this. If you, you, you are allowed to steal ideas from other people. You've got my permission, because the thing is, you don't steal the idea. You, 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 yes, you do steal the idea, but then you take that idea and you make it bigger. You, you, you incorporate it into your project. And by stealing from this guy and from that guy and from this lady, and, here, and you sit here and you get this idea, and you, and you collaborate all your, your loot, you can create an amazing flippant product. Now... Most people do not have the grit to say, I've got this idea, I've got this concept, I've got this million dollar idea, and now I'm going to make billions out of it. And I, I'm one of those people. I'm so I'm going to pump, pump, pump. And then the first small piece of shit hits the fan. And then you start doubting yourself. What the f*** did I think? You start doubting yourself. And the entrepreneurship professors has termed this. And this term is called analysis paralysis. If you analyze something so deep, it's like looking through a fucking microscope. It's, it's, like, it's like zooming in and you see all the problems. This causes you to go in a paralytic state. Paralysis is... Your, 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 your system basically shuts down. And if you've got enough voices in your head that says, this may have been a good idea. And this idea is an opportunity. This opportunity will help people. This opportunity will help society. And in the whole process, I can make money. But now, you're so stuck in your analysis that it becomes paralysis. And then what do you do? You can put that idea on the shelf. 
you know, and, and this is universal. I think this is this is this is ninety nine point nine percent of people's problem is we're all creative. Every single person has got a creative mind. That's how God created us. Every single person, normal person, has got the ability to think creatively. Now that's one thing to think. It's another thing to do. And most entrepreneurs start off with having an idea, realizing it's a, an opportunity. There's a window that's open. Now they start with the whole conceptual phase. And it, it goes fairly well, but then the first problem comes and the next one. And now this computer upstairs tells you, listen, but you're actually ripping someone else off. Um, now, <clears throat> imagine if Bill Gates went into his, his little office and he thought, I went to Steve Jobs, he showed me how a mouse works. I'm going to rip him off. But now there is a very good chance Steve is going to sue me. If Bill took this to heart, he would have said, listen, I'm getting out of it. You know, I'll write a program for IBM and I'll just stick to my guns and I'll do what I know what to do, how to do it. But I'm not going to change the world. But he did. And that's why Bill Gates was the richest man a couple of years ago.